Burt Lancaster was a memorable figure in movies, known for qualities that make him unforgettable. His standout performances made him stand out in his time. Lancaster's charm, ability to play different roles, and hard work impressed audiences worldwide. He left a strong impression on film, showing a range of talents that few could match. What favorite memory or personal experience do you have about this classic actor? Share your stories and memories below, and keep watching this video for more interesting facts about his life and career. In classic Hollywood, Burt Lancaster is a notable figure. He was born in 1913 and had a long career as an actor. Lancaster was known for his rugged charm and talent, which made people love him in movies. He wasn't just an actor, he was powerful. Lancaster started acting in the 1940s and quickly became famous for playing different kinds of characters. He could do serious dramas and exciting adventures equally well. Lancaster was known for being real. In a time when Hollywood was all about looking perfect, he brought honesty to his roles. People liked that about him and felt a connection to him. In 1960, Lancaster won an Academy Award for his role in Elmer Gantry. This was a big deal, not just for him, but for all actors. It showed that talent and hard work could make you famous. Besides awards, Lancaster was important because he touched people's hearts. His charm on screen and his humility off screen made him special. His work is still loved today and will always be remembered. In summary, Burt Lancaster was a big deal in Hollywood. His great acting, realness, and lasting impact make him unforgettable in the world of movies. Considered for roles in the movie Patton, alongside Robert Mitchum and Rod Steiger, the actor gained recognition as Paul Leibich in The Train. In a daring scene, he steers his train into a tunnel to dodge an air attack, inspired by a real event in the war. A passenger train once raced into a tunnel under the River Severn to escape a German fighter, getting hit but without serious harm. He acted in eight films nominated for Best Picture, with only From Here to Eternity winning. His influence on cinema stands out due to his various roles and memorable performances. The actor's contribution to the silver screen remains unparalleled, his versatility and charisma captivating audiences across generations. From the rugged soldier to the determined train conductor, his characters breathe life into each scene, leaving a lasting impression on cinematic history. His ability to embody the essence of a character, coupled with his magnetic presence on screen, solidified his status as a Hollywood legend. Indeed, his name became synonymous with excellence in acting, paving the way for future generations of performers to follow. With each role he undertook, he brought depth and authenticity, captivating audiences and earning accolades for his stellar performances. Truly, his influence as a cinematic icon endures, his impact continuing to inspire actors and filmmakers alike. In Field of Dreams, the movie mesmerized audiences with a portrayal of Dr. Moonlight Graham, a character filled with nostalgic charm that deeply connected with viewers. The ability to embody the essence of Graham's quiet wisdom and unfulfilled dreams left a lasting impression on the film, adding layers of depth to the storyline. Transitioning smoothly from one memorable role to another, he took on the legendary Wyatt Earp in gunfight at the OK Corral, bringing to life the famed lawman's determination and sense of justice. His strong presence and rugged charisma revitalized the Western genre, establishing him as a cinematic figure. Although initially considered for a role in Under Capricorn, budgetary constraints led to another actor taking the part. Nevertheless, his talent and versatility kept him in demand in Hollywood, with each role showcasing a different aspect of his skill. In The Crimson Pirate, audiences were captivated by the character of Captain Valo, infused with bravado and a devil-may-care attitude. He fearlessly performed his own stunts, drawing on his background as a trained circus acrobat to bring intensity to the action scenes. His readiness to take on physically demanding roles and push his craft's boundaries set him apart in cinema, earning admiration and acclaim. With each performance, he solidified his status as a true Hollywood figure, leaving behind an inspiring influence for generations of actors and filmmakers. Rejected a scholarship to play basketball at New York University to become an acrobat for the K Brothers Circus. He once shared with Bruce Davison, his co-star in Ilzana's Raid, about a prank he pulled on Kirk Douglas, who was shorter than him. He hid Douglas shoe lifts before a scene, which left Douglas noticeably irritated. Additionally, he was supposed to play Victor Mature's role in The Robe, but withdrew due to the film's Christian theme. His early career choices and playful antics on set offer a glimpse into his character and approach to acting. This insight into his persona sheds light on the dynamic nature of his craft, showing that his talents extended beyond the screen. In The Unforgiven, the original vision clashed with commercial interests. 
Originally intended as a gritty portrayal of post-Civil War Texas, the film's direction shifted during production. The writer and director departed, leading to new talent stepping in. Initially, Kirk Douglas was considered for a key role, altering the dynamic between brothers. Eventually, Audie Murphy was chosen for the part. And the professionals, despite the cast age, they insisted on doing their stunts. While Woody Strode performed all his, Burt Lancaster tackled most, including daring feats like being hung upside down and running atop a moving train. However, the studio intervened for certain scenes, substituting stunt doubles for safety reasons. Burt Lancaster's daughter, Sile, has a name pronounced as Sheila. In Trapeze, he took on the role of Mike Ribble. At 41 years old, he did almost all Trapeze stunts himself, drawing from his circus background. He insisted on performing the triple somersault, a big feat in the film. Initially, the technical advisor was cautious, so a stunt double stood in. Eventually, his friend, Nick Kravat, stepped in to do the daring maneuver. In the train, he portrayed Paul Labich. Director Arthur Penn started the project, but was replaced by John Frankenhammer due to creative differences. Penn wanted a more thoughtful film focusing on the importance of art to the French, but he favored action to make sure the movie would be a hit, especially after a previous failure. The production stopped briefly for script changes to match his vision. In Brute Force, he played Joe Collins. Originally, the producer wanted someone else for the lead, but when they weren't available, he, who had debuted in a film produced by the same person, took the role. This was his first big role in movies, setting the stage for his future success. In The Young Savages, while filming, Dina Merrill faced harsh criticism from director John Frankenheimer, leaving her distraught. She described an incident where she was labeled the worst actress he'd worked with. Burt Lancaster, her co-star, intervened, mocking the director's demeanor for not insulting her yet. During From Here to Eternity, Burt Lancaster's nomination for Best Actor at the Academy Awards led to speculation that he and Montgomery Clift might cancel each other out, paving the way for William Holden's victory for Stalag 17. On the set of 19, Burt Lancaster candidly shared with Bernardo Bertolucci about his extensive plastic surgeries, leaving only his eyes as recognizable features. In later films, he opted for a hairpiece, but for artistic endeavors, he chose to go without it. In The Young Savages, he took on the role of Hank Bell, making a lasting impression on director John Frankenhammer, who acknowledged learning a great deal from working alongside the actor. However, his career faced a financial setback when United Artists compelled him to star in four films for a significantly reduced fee due to budget overruns at his production company, Hectil Lancaster, for which he bore personal responsibility. These films included The Young Savages, Birdman of Alcatraz, The Train, and The Hallelujah Trail. Despite these challenges, his talent endured, and in November 2013, Turner Classic Movies paid tribute to him by naming him its Star of the Month in honor of his 100th birthday. He remains a celebrated figure in the history of cinema, leaving a lasting impact on the industry. In Judgment at Nuremberg, he played Dr. Ernst Janning, showing how versatile he was as an actor. Even though he didn't share scenes with Virginia Christine, his on-screen love interest from his debut film, The Killers, the connection between the characters felt authentically German. His role as Old Sweet Anderson in The Killers also made waves on radio broadcasts in 1949. Directed by Robert Siodmak, Shelley Winters acted alongside him as Kitty, adding another layer to his diverse range of roles. Interestingly, he was once considered for a role in 12 O'Clock High that eventually went to Gregory Peck in 1949. This shows how talented and recognized he was in the industry. From playing a conflicted German judge to a doomed boxer, he embraced the challenge of becoming different characters in each role, proving his acting skills. His career trajectory shows not just his acting ability, but also his willingness to try out different roles, leaving a lasting impression on the film world. The variety of characters he portrayed speaks to his dedication to acting and the lasting effect he had on cinema. His legacy as an actor goes beyond time, with each performance creating a unique story in film history. So, the story of his career, filled with memorable characters and outstanding performances, continues to be celebrated, highlighting the enduring artistry of a man who left a lasting impression on the silver screen. In Seven Days in May, he played General James Mattoon Scott, sharing the screen with Kirk Douglas and one of seven films together. In his first Western role as Owen Daybright in Vengeance Valley, he smoothly shifted to a different kind of movie. As Wyatt Earp in Gunfight at the OK Corral, he did all his own stunts, drawing on his background as an acrobat. His agility was clear in the memorable running dive scene before the shootout, showcasing his physical skill. 
When facing Jack Elaine's character, Tom McClory, he gave a standout performance that added depth to the scene. Throughout his career, he showed his versatility in various roles, proving himself as a flexible actor. These impressive moments on screen confirmed his status as a Hollywood legend, leaving a lasting impression on cinema history. In Gunfight at the OK Corral, he portrayed Wyatt Earp. Stories from his biography suggest he and director John Sturges often clashed over the portrayal of Earp's character. He finished high school in 1930 at DeWitt Clinton High School in New York City. In Twilight's Last Gleaming, he played General Lawrence Dell alongside notable co-stars such as Melvin Douglas, Richard Widmark, Charles Durning, Richard Yeagle, Burt Young, and Paul Winfield. The cast included two Oscar winners and five Oscar nominees. Lancaster's journey from high school graduation to sharing the screen with award-winning actors highlights his versatile career in the film industry. An odd thing always happened to him on a movie set. He complained about everything, sometimes loudly, but by the end, the crews loved him, despite his complaints. He never understood why that happened. During shooting for Birdman of Alcatraz, a difference of opinion arose between him and John Frankenheimer about camera placement. He physically picked the director up and carried him across the room, placing him down and emphatically stating, that's where the camera goes. Despite this incident and problems on their earlier film, the two worked together again in seven days in May in the train. He was not close friends with Kirk Douglas, as often perceived. Their friendship was largely fabricated by Douglas. In reality, they were very competitive and sometimes privately expressed mutual disdain despite respect for each other's acting talents. In Gunfight at the OK Corral, he played Wyatt Earp, forming a lasting bond with Kirk Douglas throughout the filming process. A particularly funny moment happened during a scene where Douglas, in a brave act, saves him. The on-screen heroics spilled over into real-life laughter, so much so that they had to be sent home as they couldn't stop laughing. The camaraderie between them added an extra layer of authenticity to their on-screen chemistry. Later, in Run Silent, Run Deep, he took on the role of Lieutenant Jim Bledsoe, showing his ability to play different characters. This movie not only marked another milestone in his career, but also featured Eddie Foy Roman III, grandson of Eddie Foy. Foy had a personal connection to the historical figures of Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp, bringing a unique perspective to the set. His collaboration with director John Frankenheimer was particularly noteworthy as he starred in six of Frankenheimer's films. Their creative partnership led to great movies that left a lasting impression on the industry. Each project showcased his acting talent and his ability to adapt to different roles, confirming his status as a leading man in Hollywood. These stories from the sets and collaborations offer a glimpse into the exciting world of filmmaking, where laughter and friendship can sometimes steal the show, creating lasting memories for everyone involved. Such behind-the-scenes tales add depth to the on-screen magic we enjoy. In his youth, he found himself embroiled in a violent confrontation during his time at DeWitt Clinton High School in New York. This altercation resulted in serious injuries, confining him to bed for several months. Despite this setback, he persevered and later found success in the world of acting. During the filming of Judgment at Nuremberg, he encountered tension on set when an Associated Press reporter made jests about the cast talent. Spencer Tracy, his longtime friend, reacted strongly to the reporter's comments, leading to a rift between them for six years. Tragically, he passed away in the same year as his close friend and frequent co-star, Nick Kravat, ending an era of collaboration and friendship in the entertainment industry. Despite the challenges he faced and the conflicts he encountered, he left a lasting impact on cinema through his memorable performances and dedication to his craft. In 1971, he stepped forward in support of PBT. Billy Dean Smith's defense, standing by the soldier accused of fragging two officers in Vietnam. Lancaster's commitment went beyond mere words. He contributed $3,000 towards hiring ballistics experts to aid Smith's acquittal, showcasing his dedication to justice and fairness. Throughout his career, he encountered challenges, yet always emerged resilient. Despite earlier setbacks, such as his struggles directing the Kentuckian, he delivered a memorable performance as J.J. Hunsucker in Sweet Smell of Success. Writer Ernest Lehman initially aspired to helm the project himself, but ultimately entrusted Alexander McIndrick with the directorial duties, citing Lancaster's past directorial challenges. Moreover, his versatility extended beyond the silver screen. At Marshall Fields, he captivated audiences with his agility, delighting customers with impromptu handstands and cartwheels. These anecdotes not only illustrate Lancaster's multifaceted talents, but also underscore his unwavering support for what he deemed just and right. 